Charles, I read online that if you shoot people with small calibers first, that then you become immune to bigger calibers. Do you want to try it? Yeah, I heard the same thing as well. Okay, well, we'll start with 22 and then, because it's really small. All right, Charles, don't move. Okay, let's do it. Ha, Charles, get up. Today in Grand Thumb, we're going to be answering a very important question. What is that question, Charles? My dad loves me, dude. He sure does. The bigger question is, how deadly is a 22 pistol? Uh, you know, funny enough, 22 pistols do account for a large amount of deaths, but how effective are they actually? There are a lot of reasons to pick a 22 pistol. It is a very effective weapon and is a great, in my opinion, tool for survival, especially kind of end of the world survival. Does that make sense, Charles? So today in Grand Thumb, we're gonna be testing the effectiveness of the 22 pistol from different distances in different scenarios on different parts of the body. And as always, we'll be answering questions with what, Charles? Science. Science. Am I supposed to walk away? Yeah. But before we get into it, we of course have to thank the biggest sponsor of the channel. Do it correctly, Charles. Sweaty Disabled Idiots. Yeah. The Sonoran Desert Institute. We can't thank them enough. You're looking to get your start in what? Gunsmith. Gunsmithing. Science. science Computers. Uh, they're, no, gunsmithing. Accounting. They, they are the people to go to. We can't thank them enough. They've been a big sponsor of the channel for a long time now. So yeah, big thank you to the SDI. We love them very much. And who else can we not forget? Kenny. Primary arms. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Primary arms. If you're looking for sick optics at a great price and... Uh, uh, July is uh, July is, is ask them for something free whether they fall through I don't know but just do it and of course we have to thank um, a big new sponsor we actually have Mantis so if you're looking to do a lot of dry fire training we are a huge fan of their products yep. they do an awesome job of making a product that makes in my opinion dry fire much more effective uh, we, we spend about 80% of our time dry firing I would say we spend about 80% of our time dry firing so Mantis is an awesome product to use a big thank you to them and unlike the TV that you're watching this on or the camera this is filmed on or the guy filming or or the <laughs> AAC ammunition is made in the US of A. We love them, we can't thank them enough. Uh, to be clear, we do have uh, Kenny. Our, uh, Kenny, how would you describe yourself? Mostly Chinese, based off the ancestry test. So we have Kenny sending in, Micah just had his baby, a big, uh, big congrats to Micah, right? So right here we have a Volkortin 22 pistol. It is basically a Ruger Mark IV. So if you come and take a look at that there, Kenny. It's a fairly attractive pistol. We love this, of course. But the bigger question is, is why are we doing so much on the 22 pistols? Well, I think that the 22 pistol is probably one of the better survival options you can get. It's a very versatile weapon. The ammunition is very cheap. The report is extremely quiet. And I wanna talk about that for a moment. So right here with this Volkortsen, we do have a 4.5 inch barrel. Now we have a Liberty Precision Suppressor right here and a big thank you to them for donating it to the channel for this video. With the 4.5 inch barrel, most 22 ammunition, not all, but most will be subsonic because there isn't enough barrel, not enough gunpowder is expended in uh, speeding that projectile up. So you do have a subsonic projectile from all ammunition. Because of that, with a suppressor, these are incredibly, incredibly quiet. So I find this to be a wonderful weapon for both hunting, small game, rabbits, squirrels, that type of shit. Or if you have to, dispatching certain foes in bad scenarios. So we can hear how quiet this thing is. Super quiet. The report is extremely pleasant and especially in urban areas or something like that. Um, these could be extremely effective weapons. But the question is, is how well do these perform? I've heard a lot of talk about 22 uh, being just phenomenal in the human body where it enters and it just scrambles have you heard that shit before where like 22 will enter it won't exit but it'll like scramble it's gonna scramble your eggs and just that's not the correct saying at all but it's gonna mess you up it's not gonna exit it's just gonna mess everything up inside of you like intrusive thought or just you know it's just gonna do terrible things i don't know what the um actual answer is that's why i'm interested to see today with the ballistic dummy that is why we are doing so much kind of testing on the 22 pistol today so with all that being said let's go ahead and let's talk about the dummy and then we'll get into it so right here we have the ballistic dummy from ballistic dummy labs uh charles you do know that this is not a real person right like a communist 
Very true, Charles. Ballistic gelatin is not a one-to-one. -one. Um, again, for your typical ballistic gelatin, you want about 12 inches of penetration to be a good analog to human tissue. So these being a little bit thinner, you're gonna see a little bit more over penetration than what you'd see in an actual human body. That being said, we do have analogs for organs that represent their density really well. We do have good bone analogs. The actual course of the projectile is fairly similar and these do pretty well. Um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with a further shot in the gut and we're gonna see how this guy performs. Okay, we have the 40 grain Winchester Super X. We're firing at about, what do you, what do you say this is? Mm, I don't know, like 100 yards. <laughs> okay, we're about, we're about 30 yards right here. We're gonna do a gut shot. We have a 40 grain Winchester Super X. We'll uh, give it a shot. Let's make a video. Uh, the reason a gut shot is so bad is obviously you have a lot of uh, bacteria. So if you have any type of perforation into that area, the uh, risk of infection is quite high. So although it is not always a quick death, it is um, without good medical intervention, certainly a terrible death. Right here, the round entered, this is at 30. You can see good perforation. And then what's interested, interesting is that it actually stopped right there on the, sp on the spine. Uh, you can see where it flattened out completely. Are you able to see that through? Death is certainly possible given the 22 pistol. It, it did not enter and scramble the body though. I mean, maybe if you're, you're living like south of the equator and the nearest hospital is 72 hours away. What if uh, the civilization ends? Don't get shot. We had an earlier shot, Aaron shot of mine that was a little bit high and that was from 30. You can see right here that it did shatter the rib. Um, did not make it too terribly far in. I'm interested to see um, how it's going to do at closer range. The ribs always are going to present a problem. A hard bony structure is just going to uh, stop many rounds and deflect them and in many cases protect you. And that's, um, you know, just like in getting like a blunt force impact, same thing is going to apply when it comes to firearms. What are you, you going to say, Charles? I was going to say, like, I'd rather get shot in the chest any day now that I know this. What do you, you know what? It stops bullets. It doesn't stop bullets. <laughs> okay, let's try it out. All right, we have five yards. 40 grain. It's always so underwhelming with the 22. Oh, look Still at that. Good. So it, when it hit the uh, rib right there, it actually shattered across. You see how it uh, shattered? You can see like the little lead fragments right there. And it also fractured the sternum. I know this because I quit med school and it makes me a pretty good doctor, but it didn't appear to get that deep at all or to hit anything that was terribly vital. I mean, a cracked sternum. I'm gonna do a side shot right there, so I'll fire through the sternum side shot because a lot of shots are not dead on. We'll see how it does in that case. Yeah, this is typical for um, certain neighborhoods too because they'll just start, yeah, 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 and people running away and stuff, so a lot of people get shot in the side. So the cool thing about a 22 as well is that unlike a traditional nine millimeter recoil operated weapon, uh, if you press a muzzle into something with a 22 pistol, um, it's not going to unlock the breech. And so you can actually fire at contact distance, which is pretty cool. That's actually super quiet. <laughs> so I guess the real suppressor the entire time was a, was a human body. So you can actually see the, uh, how the round traveled right there. So it hit the rib and shattered immediately, but the larger part of the slug, if you want to come around here in the back, Actually, it was stopped by the PVC stand right here, but likely would have traveled to the spine. So certainly 22 is lacking a lot of the penetrative qualities that we're seeing from like nine millimeter. Yeah. I think it still has it. I think it's certainly still a killer weapon. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple scenarios. One, you get shot, then you got like 17 hours to get to the hospital, or you get shot and it hits your spine and then you're doing an Ivar the Boneless to the hospital. But like a most what? of it, Ivar the Boneless in the show, you know, he's all walking around on his hands because he couldn't use his legs. <laughs> So next up, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be doing a contact shot at the back of the neck. Uh, there might be certain opportunities presented where you have to dispatch to someone where they're not quite aware of your presence. We'll be doing the back of the neck and then we'll also be doing one at the back of the head to see what occurs. Ah, it just sounds gross. I don't like it at all. As soon as it hit the spine, it blew apart the spine you can see right there you can see how it shredded it and then it looks like it exited to the uh what would be the esophagus so that seems like a, a fairly terrible death i mean on it 
If you're letting someone walk up that close and do that with a But you're not aware, you're turned away. You don't have yeah. eyes on the back of the head or anything. I mean, there's footsteps, there's feeling the gun press against you, there's like, and what type of hitman is using a 22? A, a lot of them actually, okay. to be clear. I've, <laughs> oh yeah, you know a lot of hitmen? Huh? No, I mean, I've watched a lot of Live Leak, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's I had a lot of internet access as a child. It wasn't good for me at all, to be clear. This uh, a blinking shot, that way, out. Let's see if... If it exits? Yeah, let's see if, if, with a, if they had suppressed 22s, would it have caused him to... Would he say six Emperor Tyrannus? Uh, is that it? Yeah, six Emperor Tyrannus. Dush. Six Emperor Tyrannus. Oh God, gross. <laughs> oh no. Look, that's way worse than Abe Lincoln. Oh, he's a unicorn almost. <laughs> yeah, that actually, uh, the slug uh, exited the skull and uh, kind of lodged in there. For Abe Lincoln, it actually got trapped in the brain. Did it? Yeah. Because he was wearing a big old hat, dude. Yeah. Ready? Oh. oh. <laughs> so it's not oh. exiting the brain. It's just, uh, what's that adage about the 22 just scrambling the brain? Oh, like a, like a, like a, Intrusive thoughts, and you're just trying not to like take it out. Of yeah, it. yeah, you're not. You got. You haven't taken your meds or whatever, and it's just kind of going bad. So, if you remember, they actually did the same surgery on uh, in that movie Master and Commander, right there. And then what you can do is, af after you got, after you got the little bullet right there on the knife, you do a little high Hunter Biden. Little so what we're gonna do right here is we're gonna rapid fire into somebody's face. Because I imagine if you have the opportunity, you're probably not going to take just one round. So we'll try that in both the chest as well as the face. We'll start with the face. Because because why, Charles? Because that's where you're supposed to drop them. There you have it. Let us know when you're ready, Charles. Recording. All right. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. That's terrible. Oh, it's popping out the back. Oh, get this, get this. Go, come here, come here, come here. Shake it a little bit. So we're gonna empty into the chest point near point blank. And uh, I'm interested to see if it, you know, what the performance is like. We're actually gonna cut into it at that point Ooh. to see if we have any good uh, impacts on the heart. I mean, obviously he's already dead, but yeah. I don't know what to say. Say, let's, let's get it again, dude. Let's, let's get it again. So uh, next up, we're gonna do the, uh, not contact, but pretty close range with the, on the uh, chest, and we'll see how that. Yeah, I would say dead. <laughs> So we've done a lot of ballistic testing on the 22 pistol at this point. Um, I was definitely a little skeptical as far as how its performance would be, but I think it's definitely proven that it has the, the absolutely has the capability to kill. Like compared to like a nine millimeter or compared to some other caliber, it, it certainly has um, not as many things going for it. But again, that kind of takes me back to the, the survival aspect, right? Yeah. In a like end of the world type scenario, I, I do see a lot of merit in the t suppressed 22 pistol as a pretty good all-purpose, all-around kind of firearm to carry. It's still very capable. It is a psychotically quiet gun because like, 
Um, a 45 is also a subsonic weapon. However, a 45, even with a suppressor, is still significantly uh, more decibels because yeah. there's just a lot more powder and a lot more behind it compared to the 22. So with the 22, it's definitely going to be that uh, shot placement that is going to matter but it, it's got that dog in it, man. It, it's so lightweight, and um, another thing to consider is how um, ubiquitous parts are for a 22. how ubiquitous 22 ammunition is. Um, it is a fairly easy weapon to upkeep and to, and to have on you. You can keep that thing on you, and you can know that um, discharging this, even in an urban setting or a uh, suburban setting, that uh, more than likely you're not going to be heard. The point is, there's a lot to be said about the 22 pistol, especially with the suppressor on it. Um, it's a very interesting concept, and uh, I'm glad you guys could be here as we tested lethality. I think my favorite shot was the under the chin. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah, that was pretty, I mean, it, it gets through it. It's just, uh, who who's gonna be unlucky? The guy and uh, the guy pulling the trigger in shot placement or the dude getting shot? I mean, well, I guess if you get shot, you're pretty unlucky. Yeah, no it's a pretty what. unlucky but, day overall. Uh, I'd rather walk away shot than uh, live leak shot. <laughs> and with that, guys, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, we appreciate you guys so much. And uh, as always, guys, uh, train, dry fire, get out there, have fun with the buddies. But uh, we got nothing else for you. Final thing for you guys, dad advice with Charles, unfortunately. I'm very worried. So, okay. Well, dad, Charles actually is a dad. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to brag. I like girls. <laughs> Spend time with your family and do it now. Don't plan on doing it and you just never follow through. Because uh, I, I would bet for all of us, or most of us, I would bet my non gold back fiat that you're gonna regret not spending more time with your family down the road. What's the uh, saying? The only person who remembers you working late is your kid? Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, it's, I know, that's the first time I heard it, so that's pretty. Yeah, it's pretty terrible because Ooh. grandpa kinda, kinda <laughs> takes all your time and everything. Yeah, and about to ask for time off after and, this. Yeah, you don't get any time off, man. Yeah. He's gonna fire me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good.